Hello, welcome to our second session of Taddy. Um, we're going to be working on chains, picos, and joining together our rings. Things you'll need this time is one of your shuttles filled with thread. You could fill your second one with thread and use it that way to kind of maintain your embroidery floss, or you can make a ball of thread as well. When you're tatting chains, it will often call for a ball of thread, usually matching color. I'm doing different colors so we can kind of see the difference between them. And so everything I did with the chain came out red on this one, and everything I did in a loop like we did our first class came out in the pink. I'm going to reverse that in this one. So we will start off with giving us some thread to work with. And normally it would just be a ball of thread, not your tatting shuttle, but we're just doing that to keep it manageable here. I'm going to take and hold it here between my thumb and middle finger. I'm going to take and wrap around my pointer finger and then I'm going to take and wrap around my pinky here and that's going to help us with our tension. I do find sometimes in the beginning it wants to come off my pinky. If I put my ball of thread over here that might help prevent some of that. And then this is our shuttle that we're going to be working with. I'm going to take that and hold it here as well. So I'm holding two threads right here. And this is going to be where we're working in, kind of like when we worked into the loop. Now your double knots are exactly like they were when we were doing them in our first class. So just go underneath with that flourish and then you go under here and over and in. Now you want it to flip just like before and there we go it flipped. And I'm going to hold it right here so that I don't lose my first half of the knot. And then I'm going to go in from this side down under and through and then we want to flip that knot once again. So there we go we got our first knot on our chain. I don't want to lose this, so I'm going to pull this back up. And if we were doing a pattern, we would, at the very end, work all this in together, um, hiding our thread. So then, to continue doing your chain, you just do your knots like usual. The only difference is we're not doing it into a loop, we're just doing it into this thread here from our ball of thread. I'm going to do a couple of them. So there I've done a couple of double knots into my thread here and this is making up our chain so this portion here on the bottom of the piece that I did that is a chain just like this and you might see there's some spacing in there well just like before with the loops you want to tighten that up by just sliding it you want to make sure you can slide if you can't slide you've done something wrong with flipping the knot you probably didn't flip the knot and you can undo your stitches like we did in our first class. So I'm going to do just a couple more to give us a good size chain here. So now I'm going from doing a chain to doing one of the loops. Now we're going to just ignore the string like it's not even attached at this point. We're going to go back to how we had done a loop before so hold it between these two fingers and wrap around here 
and then just like before doing your knots you want to make sure they flip and then make sure to pull that down tight to the chain that we did before and then you do your second half of your knot so there we have our first knot on our tatting and you'll just do as many knots as it calls for if you're doing a pattern or since we're kind of just doing our own just practice I need to pull this to give myself a little more space to work in I'm just gonna do three because it, it makes a nice size loop now we're gonna start doing picos and I a lot of times will call them pickets I don't know I just pronounce things differently sometimes but so the picos are these loops here you can do them on the chain as well but we're just doing them into the loop so that we can show how to connect a loop and it's the same thing as a double knot so we're gonna start out the exact same way going down through and like that but then once we flip our knot we're going to give it some space now you can just generalize guess so like here I'm guessing that's gonna be a nice size picket so then I just do the second half of my knot like we normally would I'm pulling through flipping it and there we go we have a picket and when you pull your loop it's gonna end up making this little circle portion now I'm gonna do a couple more stitches and then I'll show the next pico so here I am again I've done three double knots and it's time to do a pico now if you want to use the needle method which this one has been sanded down um, the ones in the kits were trimmed down as well you're going to take and it's going to be the thread out of your loop and wrap it around as many times as your pattern calls for or as many times as you want for keeping them uniform so if you do it two times here you would do it two times for the rest of them and then you just continue on with doing your knot like you normally do make sure it flips there we go and do your second half And then once you finish it, you just pull that needle out, and there you go, you've got it. And I'm gonna slide it just so that you can kind of see that there we have our Pico. Sometimes they need encouraging to pop out a little. Um, now, some of the older patterns that are out there will give that instruction, wrap it around that many times newer ones usually do measurements so the next pico that i show you will be done using that measurement process so i gotta do three more double knots and we'll come back to picos we're ready for our next pico and so for this one i took some cardboard just cereal box cardboard and I cut it to the length that it tells me I need. So it could be a fourth of an inch, an eighth of an inch, that kind of thing. I'm going to give myself a little more space to work with here. And I'm going to go in and do my first half of the double knot, but for a pico. And I'm going to just hold this here and measure it. So pull that tight and this is definitely going to make a bigger pico than the other ones I had because there's a lot more space and then I just finish the second half of the double knot so essentially picos are double knots just with a little space in them so then if I squish that see this is a much bigger pico than the other ones and you can do fringes and other different patterns with your picos and you can put them in different spots and sometimes you might um, join more than one area in a pico so you might want a big pico for that reason if you're working in a round kind of piece 
So I'm just going to do three more knots here. So then once you have it done, your loop, you're just going to pull it tight like we did in our first class. And there we go. So you can see I have some varying sizes in my picos here because I use different methods. And this one's way bigger because I was measuring something bigger. Now you can do multiple ones then of the same size by using a measurement process like these. Now I'm going to go back to doing the chain. So I'm going to take what our work and hold it here between these fingers, pull this up around that finger, and then wrap around my pinky just like before. And we have this space to work in here. Give myself a little more string to work with. You wouldn't have to do this if you're working from a ball of thread. And then we're just going to do our knots just like before. Make sure to flip it. Now that I got it here, I want to make sure I don't have too much space in between our chain and our ring. And then you do your second half, and there we go. So then just do how many knots you need for your chain section. Okay, so that should be good. I'm going to push them together. There's my chain that I've put together. Now I'm going to go back to doing a loop. And starting with my first three stitches, just to keep these the same size as the other ones. Making sure it's tight there. Okay, so there I've done three. And now it is time to join our piece together. So I'm going to join this ring that we're currently working on with the ring that we just finished. And I'm going to just take and pull the string through the pico. Now this can be a little challenging. And I'm actually going to make sure my string is right here on the front. If you do struggle with it, you could use your pin to help pull it through. Or you could also, if you happen to have any crochet hooks around the house, you can do that too. And it's a good thing this is the one that I actually made bigger. Because it makes it a little easier to pull it through. Now with this thread that I'm working with, it is going to split. So I just want to make sure all of my string has come through. And I also need some more space out of my loop to work with this. So I'm going to pull some there. So there we go. I've kind of re-put my thread together so that it's not splitting. And then you take your shuttle string here and put your shuttle right through. Now I'm going to pull this back up here and then pulling the loop but you don't want to pull it too tight because then you can't pull your ring at the very end. So I actually have too much to work with, so I'm going to tighten it back up. Now that you've got your connection, you're going to finish it off as if it was a double knot and just do the second half of your double knot. So there we go. And then I'm going to do three more stitches, just like before. And sometimes I call my knot stitches. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm here ready for my next Pico. I'm gonna grab my pin, wrap this around the amount of times that I did my other one, and then I'm gonna just do my knot just like before, make sure it flips, and then finish it off, making sure that flips as well. Then you can pull your needle out, and there is our picket. It'll form more when we tighten it up. Then I have three more knots to do, a final picket. And then three more. So here's my last picket. I'm gonna give myself a little more room to work. There we go. Start off just like you would a double knot, and then I'm measuring this one with this tool. There we go. And then finish off with the second half of a double knot. And it didn't flip, so I'm going to undo that and try again. And sometimes it just doesn't flip. There we go. And then I'm gonna finish off with my last three. So then now it's time to just tighten that up. So there we've got two connected loops and we've got two chains. We can continue on working on the chain again. You could also technically do another loop if you needed to. Um, it just depends on what your pattern is. But I'm going to pick this back up and just like before you do your double knot, tighten it up to that end. And there we are. And then you would just continue your chain, you can connect more pieces, and so on. So next class we will be doing a split ring. We'll be using two shuttles, which means you'll want two shuttles with thread on them, enough to practice with. And then we'll also be doing our beading. I'll show how to put on beads. You'll want your beading needle as well for that. So good luck, and if you have any questions, you can always contact me, and I'll see what I can do to help you. And uh, just keep practicing, and it gets a lot easier after you've just kind of practiced and done it with your hands for a while. Mm -hmm.